Welcome to the FCA Leadership Forum 5 Question Series. I'm Bob Ackerman, the Editor-in-Chief of Signal Magazine and Signal Connections. Our guest today is retired U.S. Navy Vice Admiral Herbert A. Brown, former President and CEO of AFC International. His incredibly distinguished 36-year Navy career included combat in Vietnam, as well as commanding the aircraft carrier USS John F. Kennedy, a carrier battle group, and the U.S. Third Fleet. Ashore, he commanded the Navy Space Command and he served as Deputy Commander of the U.S. Space Command. One year after he retired from the Navy, he took the helm at FC International, where he led the association for more than five years. Admiral Brown, welcome back and thanks very much for joining us. Thanks, Bob. I'm really tickled to be here. What would you say are the characteristics in an individual that mark that person as a leader? Well, you know, I would say that leadership is people, so I would think the first thing that is required for a potential leader are people skills. They need to be able to work with their bosses, with their peers, and those who work for them. So that's key. Secondarily, now, ethics can never be secondarily. They must have moral character and their ethics must be on reproach. I don't think anyone wants to follow a leader whose ethics are questionable. Given that, what is the most important skill for a leader? Well, a leader has to motivate people. Uh, you know, leadership is taking a task, a mission, a vision, and goals, and then by motivating the people to accomplish those. So I think that any leader at the top of his list has to be able to motivate people. When do you know your leadership style is working? What are the indicators? Well, you know, sometimes the difference between leadership and management gets a little bit blurry and, and gray. But, so there are metrics that you need to have in place to measure the management portion of your organization. How well are you doing financially? What's your turnover rate for your people? Those types of things that you need to measure. So they, they have some indication as to how well you are, uh, how well you're doing as a leader. And I'll tell you something else, this very frankly. You walk around in the hallways of the organization and look and see whether people are smiling or people are sitting there saying, holy cow, I can't wait till closing time. If it's, if it's the latter, I would question the leadership style. If it's the former, you probably have it just about right. Looking back, what was your greatest failure and what did you learn from it? Well, as a matter of fact, this is almost embarrassing. Uh, as CEO of John F. Kennedy, I pressed the ship one night in a night contact. We were practicing for the uh, first night of the Gulf War, first Gulf War. And I pressed the ship on a contact in order to make sure that I could catch one last airplane. Uh, and, and frankly, the more I think about it, I, I wake up at night still with chills. I could have very easily have killed thousands of people and, and really spent a billion dollars or many billion dollars of the taxpayers' money with that mistake. So what did I learn from it? Well, first of all, I was overconfident as a ship driver, and importantly, my crew was also overconfident in my abilities. So I think overconfidence as a leader is something that you need to be careful of. Secondly, I think a leader needs to every day make sure that they minimize maximum regret. In ship driving, running into another ship is a maximum regret. In business, it may be losing your very best customer or, or driving yourself out of business. So minimizing maximum regret, knowing what the maximum regret is for your organization and doing what you need to minimize the maximum regret. That doesn't say don't take risk, but take risk so that they don't end up taking you out of the business sector. Who are your heroes? I think for any man my age, you would start with your parents, a couple of teachers, and then your wife. Uh, but I won't use talk about any of those three. I would say that in uniform, my hero was uh, Vice Admiral Jerry Tuttle. Uh, Admiral Tuttle was the most courageous mission-oriented leader that I ever saw in my life. He made enormous demands upon himself, and he made demands on the people that worked for him. Not everybody liked Jerry Tuttle, but I never met a person 
that didn't respect him. Now, I happen to love him like a brother, but the fact is, is his courage, his mission focus, him putting himself always behind country and Navy and mission, that made him stand out in my mind in uniform as the finest leader that I worked for and therefore my uniform hero. Uh, in, at FCA, years later, uh, Gene Renzi from Mantech, the chairman of the board, uh, Major General retired, was a magnificent boss. First of all, he understood completely the difference between governance, the body of the board of directors, and leadership and management, the job of the, of the president and CEO, and he, he didn't really try to force his leadership style or his management style on the CEO while he was chairman of the board. I respected that greatly because it had been very easy for him to do that. In addition to that, he was the most people-oriented leader that I ever worked for. And every session where we sat down and talked about the future of this association, it was he, the chairman of the board, that said, what about the chapter presidents? What about the general membership? So as I would get off on a tangent about what we're going to do with one issue or another, it was always Gene that brought us back to the importance of the individual and the chapter president. So Gene Renzi is my industry hero. And I'd like to just, I'll, I'll end with my third, if I may. Uh, uh, when I was interviewed to go to flight training, I was asked by a group of three interviewers uh, who my favorite president was. And uh, very quickly, I said George Washington. And it took them aback because they thought I was going to be much more modern than that. But, but frankly, if you think about General Washington and President Washington, his abilities as a soldier and his ability as a statesman, he really has to stand out. Just think about it. Again, we talked about motivation a few minutes ago. Can you imagine motivating kind of a ragtag small force to go and oppose probably the greatest military might on the globe at that time? I think that's phenomenal that he can motivate those men and lead them in that direction. And then as a statesman in the White House, I think he set the tone for all presidents to come after. His ethics was beyond reproach. His statesmanship were, was, was flawless. I think we have every reason to be proud for the father, of the father of our nation. And so George Washington, in my historical sense, is a, is a true hero. Admiral Brown, thank you for giving us your insight and perspective on leadership. We appreciate all your support and good luck on all your endeavors. Thanks, Bob. I appreciate it.